Balancing humanitarian obligations and economic realities. Five years after a wave of asylum seekers entered Europe, the EU is changing the rules. But while all member states think the current situation is a mess, can they all agree on how to fix it? I'm Ali Aslan, and today's newsmaker is the EU's proposed new pact on migration and asylum. Article 80 of the EU treaty demands a fair sharing of responsibility when it comes to issues of migration. And now a new proposal is on the table that could see member states take that to heart. It comes on the heels of a fire in Europe's largest refugee camp. The catastrophe at Lesbos is a reminder of the urgent need for a common asylum policy. But as Natalie Pahonen reports, with members of the bloc split along political and ideological lines, Reaching a consensus is unlikely to come quickly or easily. Migration has always been a fact for Europe, and it will always be. Throughout centuries, it has defined our, our societies and shaped many of our lives. And this will always be the case. Migration is complex. The old system to deal with it in Europe no longer works. The European Commission says none of the EU's 27 member states will be satisfied with its proposed pact on migration and asylum, but that this is about a compromise and sharing responsibility across the bloc. This means an end to the Dublin rule, which meant asylum claims were handled by the EU country where a person first enters the system. The pact outlines plans for pre-entry health, security and identity checks of new arrivals, and a goal to process asylum claims within 12 weeks with a focus on returning failed asylum seekers. In a break with policies passed, every member state will be required to actively play a role, but it doesn't mean they have to take in asylum applicants. We know that all member states will never accept mandatory relocation. That's one thing we know already. Participation is not optional, but the Commission has an alternative for member states who don't want to take in asylum seekers. You can choose between relocating those that are uh, probably in need of international protection, or you can do the return sponsorship of those that have a return decision. This is how member states help a member state that is under pressure. This plan has been years in the making, brought on by the 2015 refugee crisis, when more than a million refugees and migrants entered the bloc. Frontline states like Italy and Greece were pushed beyond breaking point. Attempts to distribute refugees throughout the EU drove political divisions. And countries like Hungary and Poland refused to take in new arrivals. Five years on, and the clearest example of the urgent need to reform Europe's migration policy was the Moria refugee camp on the Greek island of Lesbos. It was home to thousands of people left living in squalid conditions while they waited, in some cases for years, for their asylum claims to be processed. Now they have been made homeless after fires destroyed the camp earlier this month. Moria is a stark reminder. We need to find sustainable solutions on migration. And we all have to step up. The need for a new approach is indisputable, but getting an agreement from all 27 member states appears anything but certain. Natalie Pohonen, The Newsmakers. Well, to discuss this, I am joined now from Brussels by Catherine Woolard. She's the director of the European Council on Refugees and Exiles. Also in Brussels is Dominik Tarczynski. He's a member of the European Parliament and a member of Poland's ruling law and justice party. And joining us from Hello. Colchester, UK, is Jeff Gilbert. He's the chair of the Global Academic Interdisciplinary Network of the Global Compact on Refugees. Catherine, 
uh, after the devastating fire at the Moria refugee camp and basically after four years of political deadlock, the EU and the European Commission has finally unveiled a new migration and asylum pact. Uh, are you content with the outcome? From our perspective, unfortunately, the pact looks like a missed opportunity for the EU to change direction. Um, your correspondent there referred to solidarity, but there are other elements in the pact which indicate it will be a continuation of the attempt to outsource responsibility to other regions and other countries, and not least to Turkey, which is doing so much. So as well as a solidarity measure, we see new provisions on border procedures and the use of detention at borders, which I'm afraid to say look rather like a continuation of the Moria camp model, um, even though we've just been reminded of the flaws in that approach. And um, so I think it's a shame that the Commission hasn't been more bold. Um, the Commission, the pact says that um, the system is broken and it can't be fixed. I think we would disagree with, on that point. We have many suggestions on how to make asylum work in Europe, and that should have been the direction taken. So if I hear you correctly, the New Deal is not going far enough. Dominic, the European Commission now is abandoning the idea notion of mandatory refugee quotas. Uh, you should be quite content about this, but the Polish government is already voicing their displeasure. No one will ever force us to receive illegal migrants. First of all, this beautiful language which is used as humanitarian duty, humanitarian uh, attitude, and also solidarity, all these beautiful words has nothing to do with reality. Uh, your reporter mentioned the financial reality, political conditions, and reality since 2015, when this madness was started by Germany. And beautiful word, which, which sounds as responsibility, calls me and sells me um, as an excuse for everyone to be responsible for Angela Merkel's policy. This is madness, which was started by Germany. Germany is responsible, responsible mainly Germany, is responsible for this, for this, um, for, for this ideology, new God, as, 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 as it's called by, by many commentators. And we are not going to pay, uh, uh, you know, we are not responsible right. for but Dominic, this madness. Do, so, uh, do, Dominic, getting into the point, there is nothing new about this, nothing new about this pact. But, but how is it not new? I mean, the European Commission is officially a abandoning the idea of mandatory refugee quotas. It gives the power now to countries like yours to refuse asylum seekers and send them back. I mean, everything that your country has wanted, but you, you Poland, the Czech Republic, Hungary, and, for it. Uh, Hungary and Slovakia has already come out on day one and said, we're not supporting this deal. Well, obviously, because this is what this is what I said. Angela Merkel was looking for a cheap labor. Then she found out that they don't want to work. They don't want to learn language. And then she gets she come out with this idea. OK, let's spread them around. Let's say that this is our European responsibility. Responsibility, beautiful word. So I'm not going to be the one who is responsible for that. I'm not going to I'm not going to be responsible for the burning camps and uh, uncontrolled migration of illegal illegal migrants, not refugees. I'm a lawyer, I'm trying to repeat it every single time when I have a chance to debate and discuss this, this global, global problem and global crisis. A refugee, by the international law, is the, is the person who flees from the place of the conflict to the first safe country. We are not, Poland is not the neighbor with Syria, Iraq, or any other conflict zones. That's number one. Number two, historically, if we are talking about the responsibility and European solidarity, we have to look on the bigger picture. If solidarity and responsibility is such a beautiful words in, uh, in, in, in the mouth of many German uh, members uh, of the European Parliament or German politics, they have to pay for their responsibility for the Second World War II. They have to pay um, reparations. That's right. number I, one. I, I, then we can I, talk I think, about reality taking, let, let's and stick, the present let's day. Let's stick to the migration pact, please, if we can. Jeff. Yes. Uh, I know. Uh, I'm trying to look at the bigger picture well, and let, let's responsibility. Try, let's try to look at the bigger picture altogether, Jeff. Now, we ju you just heard, uh, Dominic, you know about the reaction from the Visegrad nation countries. Is the new pact dead on arrival? 
No, it's not dead on arrival. It would help if people actually read the law, which would be uh, a novelty uh, in certain cases, because the 1951 Convention does not require you to apply for refugee status in the first country you come to. And Article 14 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights says you have the right to seek asylum. It doesn't say anywhere in the first country you come to. That's a European Union, Brussels restriction introduced by Dublin, not by the 1951 convention and if people get through to any border they should be treated under the 1951 convention as someone who is seeking refugee status and they cannot be refooled in any way shape or form to the frontiers of a territory where their life or freedom would be threatened so you can't push people back there's also the european convention on human rights which talks about not yes, we can. Yes, we back. can. If they are illegally, no. if they are trying but to are cross the border no illegally, we're illegal. going to push them back. As everyone else... No one is illegal. Human <laughs> beings... So go, so try to come, try to get, try to come, try to come to US without passport. Get the yeah. boat, get through the ocean and try to cross the American border. You know what's going to happen? You're going to be killed by coast guards. That's May what it's I called, illegal. The fact that they are coming with the boats, the, the, the fact that you are, the fact that you are coming the like with 100 or 200 of you doesn't make you legal. Ka Catherine, interestingly enough, yes. uh, the European Commission says, look, this is real politic, but there are many human rights groups, Amnesty International amongst others, who accuse Brussels of giving in to these anti-migration sentiments and uh, governments. Uh, are you seeing it the same way? So I think what we see even in this discussion we're having now is the difficulty of convincing certain member states to accept a fair sharing of responsibility. But I would go beyond that. We see certain member states that are opting out of their current EU and international obligations when it comes to asylum and refugee protection. And these are obligations that exist in, under international law, but also under EU asylum law. So the new pact doesn't appear in a vacuum. Um, we already have a very complex legal framework and we have a flagrant um, lack of compliance with that from certain countries. I would also note that the majority of people who arrived in 2015, and it's still the case, are people who are entitled to protection and who will get protection decisions at the end of an asylum process. Um, so we shouldn't misrepresent um, the nature of those arriving. Are they the and same who the burned the camp recently? Are they the same? And, and Is it the, sa are, the same people who people, just burned the camp? Uh, the same people, people, the same group? Who are primarily refugees and fleeing, of course, from the ongoing conflict and repression in, in Syria. In terms of trying to find a solution, I would say the Commission's proposal on solidarity may have been acceptable to the Visegrad four countries in 2016, but it looks unlikely to be accepted now. Um, and so... For that reason, um, there may be long and tense negotiations and the solidarity measures may not be accepted. I would also like to perhaps just correct something that was mentioned at the start of your broadcast. Um, this is not the end of Dublin. The Dublin rules remain. Um, there are two circumstances in which compulsory solidarity is triggered. These are when countries are facing migratory pressure and in the context of disembarkation of people res rescued at sea. Um, those are two situations where solidarity is needed. And even if the new reforms aren't accepted, what we expect to see is a coalition of the willing member states that continue to respect EU like and international very law, so, stepping in absolutely. to help their fellow member states in line with the treaty obligation article 80 that you mentioned at the beginning of your presentation. Right. Dom Dominic, just for me to understand, your, your country has from day one refused to take in any refugees and resisted mandatory quotas. Now mandatory quotas are out. You're no longer even forced to take in asylum seekers. You can refuse them. Uh, you're not obliged to offer shelter to anyone. Uh, why are you still not pleased with what the European Commission is offering? Well, first of all, because this problem is a global 
problem. I don't think that the migration is a European problem as a continent, and, and surely it's not a problem for the European Union only. Where is the rest of the globe? Where is Saudi Arabia? Where is Qatar? Where are the partners of European Union? This is global conflict and will be not solved if the whole community, international community, will not be involved, especially those who are very close culturally and geographically to the zones of the conflict. So I keep repeating, where is Saudi Arabia, where is Qatar, and other Arab countries, very rich Arab countries. That's number one. Number two, beautiful word, solidarity. We cannot hear solidarity word when we are discussing Nord Stream 2, a beautiful and big deal between Germany and Russia. We do not hear a word solidarity when we are discussing and making a comments on deals between France and Russia. I'm talking about about the warships, mistrals. We do not hear these words when they are making the businesses with Russia. They don't care about NATO. They don't care about our safety. They don't care about our children and grandchildren. They are making money and they are asking us to share the burden. Okay, can we stay on the migration path? Germany and France is not responsible when they are making money. And this is very important because if European Union in this shape, in this existence, must, has to be, it has to be responsible at their must be a solidarity, but in every single aspect mm. of our existence. Not only migration, but also, but also safety, but also NATO, but also, uh, but also economy, right. Nord Stream 2 again. Every aspect is very important. And I think migration as a one of these pillars, uh, it's not enough to discuss solidarity and responsibility. Mm. That's why I keep repeating, we are not the slaves. VV, it's not a slave. Poland, it's, it's not a slave. Zero illegal migrants will come to Poland ever. I, I, keep I don't think anyone is making time. the arguments is that the Poles are slaves illegal migrants. in what shape or form. This but is very important. If someone wants to apply, if someone wants to apply for a visa, for a permission right. to be in Poland, to be asylum seeker, he can, that's what it is. He can apply, submit his documents and wait for our decision, not burn our streets as it is in the suburb of Paris, in London, used to be, in Sweden, Jeff, Malmo, Jeff. and other places where hundreds and hundreds is, of illegal we, migrants arrive. It, it is really not helping the discussion if we're not staying on the specifics yeah. of the new pact, which this show is being devoted to. Um, mm. Jeff. But there's nothing it's, new about it. It's a new word. There is nothing new about this pact. Jeff, uh, respond to... It's a beautiful, to, different word, uh, but there's nothing new. Respond there was to Dominic's a word, accusation. Fresh act. There's nothing fresh Re about it. Jeff, please respond to Dominic's uh, accusation that this is just sugarcoating, if you will, just different words. But in the end of the day, the problem has not really been solved. Well, to start with, in responding to part of the suggestion that this is global, I would agree it is global. But when 85% of persons of concern to UNHCR are located in low and middle income countries, and only 15% are in the global north, I don't think any EU country can complain about the number of people it's being asked to support. And as for part of the pact, part of the pact will give increased measures towards prevention of refugee flows in the first place, towards securing voluntary repatriation by encouraging transitional justice in the states which give rise to the flows in the first place. So there's, there are bits of this pact which are undoubtedly new. As Catherine has pointed out, Dublin does remain. That's going to stay in place and that is in some ways part of the problem because it does put a lot more pressure on the southern European states that didn't choose to be in direct line with the refugee flows. And the rest of the EU does need to show solidarity in all aspects, and that includes migration as well. But the one thing that really would help here is if the EU measures coming out of Brussels, and that includes all the EU member states, started realising that they needed to provide protection first and foremost to people who are seeking refugee status. And most of those people who are coming into Europe from either North Africa or from Turkey at the minute are entitled to protection. And there are not many 
if you take account of the number of people right. in the European Union, by comparison with, let's say, Lebanon, right. Ca the numbers yes. are just tiny. Yeah, but C Catherine, uh, it, yeah. It, is, it is fair, though, to say that most arrivals in Europe are not ah. refugees but asylum seekers, isn't that the case? A lot gets mixed up here in the debate. And last year, 500,000 people were ordered to leave the EU, but only 30% were returned to their country. Doesn't this give ammunition to politicians yes. like Dominic Tarczynski? So firstly, there's a frequent misrepresentation ammunition. of the figures. I don't we, shoot, I use arguments. That, I'm speaking now. Um, we, had, we heard that yesterday from the commissioners as well, oh, referring don't shout. to don't get nervous. Dominic. Please, let's, let's Catherine, uh, have, uh, have a word. Referring to a 35% uh, protection rate, this is first instance decision making. If we look at the completion of processes, at that stage we see that most people are awarded protection. Um, it's interesting to hear this discussion on solidarity because we see certain member states are keen on solidarity when it involves a discussion of the EU budget and receiving EU funding um, and a situation where there is uh, an ongoing lack of respect for EU values and EU law. Solidarity is not just a nice word, it's also a treaty obligation. Um, and this uh, continued impunity for ignoring of EU law and the EU's legal order. But to be fair, the EU really doesn't have any mechanism to bring those countries, twist their arms and bring them aboard, as we can see, quite on the contrary. Yes. Um, and, and I think that's the general We're going to use veto. We are partners. We are equals. And, and if we are equal, we're going to use veto yeah, but Dom on the budget. Dominic, and no but one Dominic, will blackmail us. But no Dominic, one Catherine, will force us. Is no one will a buy us. Point. Zero. I mean, and that's it. Zero illegals. Dominic, zero is one number, but 16 billion is a number. That's the amount that Poland <laughs> has received from the EU just last year. 16 billion euros contributed. You've only contributed... 4 billion to the EU budget, that's a 12 billion euro surplus. Our Christian that you faith, have, our that, Christian that roots, received. our Christian culture, that, much your Christian more worth culture is not affected than by millions. the numbers that I've just presented. So what, what about the argument that Catherine <coughs> has put forth, that the solidarity is very much uh, embraced when it comes to EU budget allocation, but not when it comes to allocation of refugees? Dominic. Um, I, maybe I can this come in actually, again. This was actually a, a question point. for Dominic, but... Yeah, well, there was a point, actually, where I agreed No, no, I couldn't Dominic, hear you. I couldn't hear you. Is... The, the, the answer is, if I may. Please. If I may. Please, please. Okay, your, it, way of, your, your way of thinking is... Okay, okay, your, your way of thinking, and, and many politicians in Brussels, the way of thinking is, okay, let's say what they have to do. Let's tell them what they have to do. If they will not do it, we're not going to pay them. We don't care. Money, it's not that important. The important is our identity, our safety. For me, important is my family, my child, my grandchild in the future, my mom, my family, my fellow citizenships, my country, because I care about my country. I love my country. I, I, I treat my country as my mother. So to us, there are values above the euros, and you don't understand that. That's why I'll keep repeating. Zero illegals. Zero of those who are burning um, camps, streets, and the cars. Zero riots in Warsaw. Zero. Not even one. We haven't had even one terrorist attack. This is but, reality. Okay, so you're willing to forego mm -hmm. the 16 billion euro then uh, from the EU budget. Uh, <coughs> Catherine, go ahead. Uh, yes, I, I would say there's actually a point on which I agree with Mr. Tarczynski, which is the question of international responsibility sharing. And there are certainly countries that don't do enough. Um, and many of those yes, are in Europe. Saudi Arabia um, and Qatar. The, the That's global, true. Um, displacement crisis. <clears throat> um, there, there is far more that Europe collectively could and should do. And of course, the cu countries that Mr. Tarczynski mentioned, who are not pulling their weight either. Um, but what we see with the pact are many elements that will actually prevent people arriving and outsource them to countries which are already doing a huge amount, including Turkey, given that we're um, discussing this in a Turkish broadcast channel. Um, nonetheless, 
And I, I would say, given what we've heard and given what we know about the positioning of certain member states, obviously reaching any kind of agreement is difficult. Um, and we have certain member states who've really, in many senses, given up on the EU, right. except when it comes to pocketing the money. So le let us perhaps give up on that and let's focus on what is the legal framework in place, right. what is the compliance that needs to be uh, put in place, and those of us working uh, to ensure compliance and a functioning asylum system will sure. continue to do that. And we hope to see the member states and the countries that are willing to step up because they know it's in their own interest as well as an international obligation. Um, I don't mind. Let me just, if let you me want just, to Jeff, take them Jeff, all, Jeff, take them all, second, pay for since, them. Since, I don't mind. Since we're about to wrap up, 30 seconds, unfortunately, only. Do you think this deal will come into life or how do you foresee this? Unfortunately, only 30 seconds left. I don't see this deal coming into life. I see a variation on this deal coming into life. It'll be worse for refugees because the compromises will be made at the expense of those who need protection. Catherine Ward, um, I, Dominic Tarczynski uh, and uh, Jeff yeah. Gilbert. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Certainly much more to talk about on this issue. I think we can all agree. Ma many aspects still left uncovered. Thanks for joining us nonetheless. And thank, uh, you. thank you out there, of course, for watching. Hope to see you again next time for a new edition of Newsmakers. Thank you.